Special thanks to our sponsors for sending us to Computex 2019. What's going on everyone? I am here at Silverstone's booth at Nangang Exhibition Hall for Computex 2019. We're gonna talk about the watt per liter race and why it's important. We don't talk much about that, especially when we do power supply reviews. Usually you just read a wattage, let's say it's a, this size and it's 700 watts, right? It does the job, it's a standard ATX size, and that's that. But there are some important applications for, say, SFX, right? And you guys have seen us use SFX power supplies in the past. We've used them for many ITX builds. Uh, you have even some uh, more niche form factors like SFXL. So this won't fit in a standard SFX case. Uh, so it's slightly larger than that, especially in terms of width. Uh, but it's not as large as ATX, right? So this is where the watt per liter race really starts to matter because certain applications require small power supplies but powerful power supplies. And being able to solve both of those issues in a unit like this is extremely difficult technically and very impressive. So take this one for example, SX750, 750 watts and a small SFX form factor like this. And then let's say you're going all out. You got a two systems and you want one power supply you throw it all into the decathlon 2000 watt unit you guys see how many connections are up there <laughs> so you can see like for example this 750 watt unit cough you want to get in close on this one is that going to focus for you looking good all right so that's sfx 750 watt 945 watts per liter and the liter refers to the size of the unit itself very small and if you have a lot of power packed into that obviously that ratio goes up in this case here, a 2000 watt unit, is gonna have a, 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 a watt per liter ratio of 861. And so that's obviously a little lower than something like this, but this is a lot more technically difficult to do. Again, because you have all these small components packed into a unit like this that you have to keep properly cooled for one and that can't cross over and short each other out because that would be really bad for your system and probably other things in your house. Now, an application for something like this, I'm gonna show you guys uh, a case that they've been working on over there that will actually use a small form factor power supply like this, high wattage, uh, but a server application or a NAS. So let's go check that out. Now this is a CS381, maybe not the prettiest name, but you guys are gonna like what you see on the inside of this. This is by definition a micro ATX case. And if I pop the lid here and see the goodies inside, two 120 mil fan mounts here on the back. So you actually put a 240 mil AIO in this case. You're wondering what all of this is for. Obviously these are for SSDs, but these big trays here up front are for, if I know how to open this right. Oh, there we go. Cool, check that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hot swappable bays for hard drives. And that's what's taking up a majority of the space in this case. The motherboard obviously goes underneath that. You're gonna need a low profile CPU cooler, but in a build like this, you're probably not gonna put a 9900K, let's be honest. And then how they get this to be so small overall. You're wondering, where on earth does the power supply go? Kyle, come back in here. How do, how do you put a power supply in this build? If you, if you just take a guess right now, where, it, it ain't going there, that's where the graphics card goes. That, how about underneath the hard drive? Nope, that's micro ATX. It's gonna come all the way to the front of the case virtually. Maybe over here, where is it gonna fit? Just enough space above or to the right of the motherboard for an SFX power supply. And when you have tons of hard drives, potentially an SLI config, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could put two graphics cards in here, but one beefy graphics card if you really wanted and a fairly power hungry CPU, again, if you wanted, and you can power that all by a higher power SFX PSU that fits nice and snug on the right side of this case. This is one of the few cases I've ever seen in the micro ATX form factor that manages to stay this small uh, and pack this many hot swap bays in it. And that is due in large part to the fact that they've been able to implement a small form factor power supply, uh, a high wattage SFX power supply into a case this size. All right, you guys, and we're gonna close with uh, a couple power supplies that don't have any fans. You guys saw this one before. This is the Night Jar, and uh, we did, we've did we actually reviewed this in a dedicated video. So no fan in this. SFX L form factor is so slightly larger than standard SFX. It's gonna you know, be a little longer, sometimes a little fatter, so it won't fit in uh, places where standard SFX power supplies are designed to, to sit. And you can see here, we have another fanless model. This is an ATX version, so it's a lot bigger. This will fit in most cases out there. And yeah, no fan. You can literally see all of those small board components straight through the chassis. We have tried to get this in a couple of clips. You guys have been awesome. And uh, we have next to go to Gigabyte. So we're gonna start filming that one here very soon. Special thanks to 
Silverstone for, for really helping us out, Tony especially, giving me the rundown of all the components. And uh, I want to make sure that uh, we show you guys as much as we can this year at CompuTex 2019. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.